Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at a power supply which, strangely, is innovative. You wouldn't have thought that would be the case here in 2025, but Lian Li have pulled out the stops and made what is otherwise a pretty much boring product actually very compelling and also at a very competitive price. Lian Li are well known for their high quality components, but some people don't like spending the higher prices for some of the higher tier items. So Lian Li have come out with a new power supply range. This is a bronze rated power supply, still comes with a five year warranty, but it's got some really cool features which may make it suitable for certain budget minded buyers. So today we'll be taking a look at the Lian Li RBO 750B. This is the 750 watt version. There's also three models available. So we've got the 750 we've got here. There's also a 650 and also a 550 watt. So there's pretty much something to choose from for most platforms, depending on obviously your needs graphics cars wise, etc, etc. And they all support ATX 3.1. Two of them support PCI Express Gen 5.1. 12 volt 6x2 connectors. They all come with a five year warranty and all of them are 80 plus bronze rated. Now what we're gonna do on this video is just go through to an unboxing, take a look at some of the key features which I think are actually very interesting. And then at the end of the video, you can make up your minds whether or not this is gonna be suitable for your next build. And as always, we will put some links in the video description, some of which may be affiliated. So if you do purchase from them, we do get a very small kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it certainly does go some way to helping out the channel. And also in full disclosure, I will say this unit has been sent to us free of charge for review purposes from Lian Li. That hasn't made any difference to the review and they will not be seeing this video before it is published and they have got no interaction with it whatsoever. So taking a look at the box, this is a relatively typical nice Lian Li retail packaging. So as you can see, this is the RBO 750B, smart routing and cleaner builds, which is one of the key things. And as you can possibly already see, we've got some very interesting adornments on the side of the power supply, which obviously we'll take a closer look at later. As it says at the top there, ATX 3.1 ready. Also PCI Express Gen 5.1 with a dual color connector to make things even safer. Comes with a five year warranty, and as we've already said, is 80 plus bronze rated. On the side of the box, it lists off some of the specifications. So if you want to pause the screen, you can check those out a little bit closer. It does include actually something which is quite important, a 135 mil hydraulic bearing fan, which is nice for keeping noise levels down. It doesn't have a fanless mode, but it has got very low noise levels, which as some of you will know, I do appreciate. And it's got some excellent protection, such as over current protection, over voltage protection, over temperature protection, over power protection, short circuit protection, and under voltage protection. And all that is within working temperatures between zero and 40 degrees Celsius. And as we've said, it comes with a five year warranty. On the back of the box goes over more of the same. So talking about the 80 plus, also compatible with Intel ATX 3.1 specifications. It also has native PCI Express Gen 5.1 12 plus four pin modular interface. And it's got an interesting cable management structure. Also on the box, it goes through some of the rated output voltages. So you can see importantly there on the 12 volt rail, we've got 62.5 amps, giving us the 750 watts total output. The additional rails, 3.3 and 5 volts, will give you another 100 watts. Also something interesting, which I've just realized actually, and I didn't know before, this actually does have the model number and it says black. So potentially they're gonna do white versions of this as well. At the time of me getting this information, it appears they're only available in black as it stands, but potentially there'll be white ones coming out in future. So do check out those links to see if those are also available. On the other side of the box, it talks about the 80 plus efficiency curve and also the fan acoustic noise. Let's take a look and see what we actually get inside the box. Now, obviously you're gonna get the power supply, which we'll take a closer look at shortly, but in terms of other accessories, you get a region specific power cable, which is nice to see. There's also some screws for attaching the power supply to your case. There is a thank you from Lian Li for making a purchase and some QR codes. You also got your user manual and cable instructions. And also there's an interesting bag with some additional cables. Now this is touted as being a non-modular power supply, but it is kind of semi-modular in some respects. So all of the main cables, which you're really likely to be using, are firmly attached to the power supply, but you have got some additional ones which you can plug in optionally. Now these are two cables. So these are accessory cables of which they have got SATA connections and also a Molex style connection. 
These use a standard six pin connection, which is designed to attach to the power supply, as you'll see from some of the shots there. The cable is there ready and waiting. Two cables, one of which has got two SATAs and one Molex, and this one's got three SATAs and one Molex. So you can choose to use them if you want to. Of course, you don't have to. Choice is entirely up to you. Now the next one is actually very, very interesting indeed. So this one is actually a eight pin PCI Express type cable, but it also has a female version of the 12 volt high power. Now this is actually really good because if for some reason you've got an older graphics card which doesn't use the new 12 volt high power or 12 volt six by two connection, then you can actually adapt it. So you can adapt the native connection on the power supply back to the old fashioned PCIe connection. So yeah, that's pretty handy. And it's actually pretty useful because as you'll see shortly, there aren't that many PCI Express type connections, or at least the old ones, actually on the power supply. So this does give you an extra one and a pretty high powered one at that. So now let's take a look at the power supply itself. And uh, it's a square design, which is quite nice. And it's actually designed with some of Lian Li and other manufacturer cases in mind. So you can kind of mount this in multiple ways. And also there's lots of cable management. So if you are putting it into a chassis where the power supply is rotated 90 degrees perhaps, then the cable management actually makes that a little bit easier. Or if you're just using this in a regular ATX case, the cable management is built in. We've got these nice Velcro straps on three sides. So you can just strap your cables in to keep things all nice and clean and tidy and also increasing some of the airflow maybe in some of those tighter spots. So I think it's actually really good that Lian Li are trying to make what is, like I said earlier, a very boring product into something actually a little bit more interesting, built-in cable management and a kind of semi-modular type design, I think is excellent. So looking at the power supply, in terms of the design itself, it actually looks really smart despite how relatively inexpensive this is. And actually, I suppose we should talk about pricing. Now, MSRP prices that we've got from the review guide is there are the 550 watt model, which is coming in at $49, or $49.99. The 650 watt is coming in at $59.99 in dollars. And when you go up to the 750 watt, this one is going to be $69.99 in dollars. Now, how that is going to reflect into UK and European pricing, honestly, it's anyone's guess. But hopefully from those numbers, we'll get some pretty approximate figures. And hopefully by the time this video goes live, it'll be on various sites. So again, we'll link to those so you can check out local pricing. I'm hoping there's going to be some form of, well, good currency transaction. Obviously dollars to UK pounds, we should get a significant discount. But as always, time will tell. So in terms of the design, very sharp looking, I think, actually. Really nice looking, got a nice design there. Also, they've done the fan grill in such a way that it actually reduces turbulence on the blades. And some of you who may be slightly more eagle-eyed will notice that the actual fan in there, 135 mil, so slightly unusual, but also it's got 11 blades on it. Now, that generally will make it less choppy, so it's going to be a nicer noise profile. And in fact, we've done some testing today, and it is actually pretty quiet. So let's have a little listen to the fan noise, and you can see what it's like for yourselves. So there you go, you can see what it sounds like, or hear what it sounds like. I'll get that right one day. Anyway, so nice Lian Li badge on there, if for some reason this is on show, so it's, uh, yeah, pretty slick. On the outside edge there, so we've got our power input, and you've got your main power switch to turn it on and off, also ventilation. No fanless mode, or zero dB fan on this, unfortunately, so it is gonna be spinning at a constant RPM, which is a little bit of a shame, but I think at this price point, it's totally acceptable. On the side, again, we've got those Velcro straps. So you can just undo those a little bit and you can put your cables in there to cable manage them however you see fit. So that's a nice addition. It's gonna save you a few cable ties. On the other side, you've got exactly the same. So another two the same. And on this side, actually you've got the kind of semi-modular aspect. So you've got the two six pin connectors there, which is for your accessory cables. So again, if you don't wanna connect them, you've got no use for SATA, you've got no use for Molex, leave them in the box absolutely fine but if you have got a pc where maybe you've got an addressable rgb controller or something else which requires those extra accessory connections then you can plug them in should you need to and of course if you want to plug them in leave them in the pc maybe you're someone who's building flip pcs 
or your system integrator. You can plug the cables in and obviously use the management on the side to keep all the cables nicely bundled up. So if the intended user wants to use them, they've got them there and ready. And if that wasn't enough innovation, they've also gone through and actually made the cables look nice. Even though for the majority of people, they're just gonna be stuffed into the back of your PC. You're never gonna see them again, apart from the little bits that poke around the side of the motherboard. But they've actually made them have a very nice flat material. And also they've gone ahead and actually stamped a kind of a texture into the wires as well. So yeah, that's pretty good. I like that a lot. And also they are very, very flexible. So even if you've got to do really obscene bends in the cables, it's not a problem. They've got a decent amount of flex to them. Yeah, I do like that. That is going to make cable management much, much easier. I think that is the kind of the key takeaway of this power supply. It's designed with ease of use in mind. So let's take a look at the cables in more depth and also the length. So this is your main 24 pin stroke 20 pin main power connection. This one comes in at 600 mil in length. So that is 24 inches. Next up, we've got our EPS or CPU additional power. You've got two of these cables included and there's one connector on each one. And these are 650 mil. So giving you a little bit of extra length there. So if you've got one of those cases where the cable has to really stretch across, you should be absolutely fine. Again, it's done in that really nice flat cabling, which is very, very easy to mold and put wherever you want to, even if you're putting kinks in it. So for cable management, yeah, these are gonna be absolutely great. Next up, we've got our PCI Express, the kind of the old school. So this is the six plus two or eight pin connector. Again, nice flexible cables. So very easy for cable management, even if you wanna put some twists in them, which I probably wouldn't recommend, but certainly you can do. Also, the sides unclip, so if you want to disconnect it, if you've got a card which uses a six pin, not an eight pin, you can do that very easily. There is a piggyback on this one. So you've got the main cable itself, which is in at 600 millimeters in length to the first plug. Then you've got another 150 mil there. So yeah, you can move that across into your graphics card and also cable manage it pretty easily. Shame that there's only two of these, but again, like I said earlier, it's not all that it seems. So next up, we've got our new style PCI Express connector. So this is PCI Express Gen 5.1. Now, Lianli have gone through a lot of designs, re reiterations, and what have you to make this as safe as it possibly can be based on the specifications. And also they've done it as a dual color. So if for any reason you plug this into your graphics card and you can still see a little bit of blue, you're doing it wrong. You need to push it in further. Uh, also, it's got some nice clips on there. And as you can see, this one is rated safely to 450 watts, which I think is very sensible. You can get some cheaper power supplies, which add one of these and they put 600 watts on there, which is a scary thing to do. So 450 watts is gonna be more than enough for most people based on the cost of this power supply. If you're using a graphics card, which requires significantly more than 450 watts, then obviously you should be buying something higher up the tier. Again, for those wondering, this one is actually a bit on the longer side. So this is 650 mil. You do often find power supplies. They tend to make these a little bit shorter, but that's really nice for cable management purposes. So you don't have to have any real tight bends. But again, they have used that really nice soft cabling. So there's an awful lot of flexibility to it. So yeah, it shouldn't be any problems at all. And also, if you, even if you want to do a really tight bend on it, it is essentially going to be absolutely fine. Just make sure that there's no blue showing and you're good to go. Now also, with this cable in mind, again, if you're looking at a system with possibly a slightly older graphics card or you're using an AMD card and they are kind of steering slightly away from this type of connector, if you need an additional plug because you've only got one effectively on this cable, you could daisy chain them if you want to, but that isn't always appropriate. So if you want to use two cables, then you can do because like I said, they include this cool adapter. So you just plug that into your 12 volt connection, making sure you can see no blue at all, which we can't right now. And then that's gonna give you another old style PCI Express six plus two connector. So in theory, it gives you three in total because you've got one plus the piggyback and that one. So if you've got a card which needs three, then obviously on your own head be it. But for most people, if you just need two pins, that's gonna be absolutely fine. And of course, this connector and this cable are rated for up to 450 watts. So again, you shouldn't have any issues with this whatsoever. I think that is a fantastic idea. And just this adapter on its own is actually a really, really good idea. And it's very firmly attached in there. And yeah, it's uh, it does lock in very nicely and you cannot see any blue. So that means it's good to go. 
So there you go, there are my thoughts and a, a quick overview of the new Lian Li RBO 750B, a bronze rated power supply with a five year warranty and a fantastic brand to back it up. Got some very cool features on here. The cable management is excellent. The little attention to detail like these extra adapters for those that need it is great. Very nice flexible cabling for those that struggle with cable management. Pretty much all the cables you're ever gonna need plus some additional ones if you wanna bolt them on, the choices are yours. I think this is fantastic for a 750 watt or 650 watt or even 550 watt power supply around about this price point. I think this is a cracking deal. But ultimately what I think about it isn't really important. What you think about it is. So sign off in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this one. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and then click on the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.